Uh, what's that? Why it may annoy? Transmitting right now. Damn thing's always breaking down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you can hear me, we're currently having some technical issues with our hypernet relay. If you can't hear me, well, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm Archimedes, and you are listening to Radio Voss God. Radio Voskhod is a free public hypercast. It is provided free of charge because, as we know, information wants to be free. And the program is funded in part through a generous grant from the Trade Coalition for the Allied Proletariat's Ministry of Culture, as well as through donations from listeners like you. Okay, listeners, I've got a special report for you tonight. Original Entertainment's long-awaited spaceship simulator Arena Commander which was slated for a limited release last week, has had its launch delayed due to what developers referred to as critical software bugs, such as inconsistent multiplayer connectivity issues and an unfortunate tendency for their proprietary VR headsets to... explode when the accelerometer detected movement beyond a certain threshold. Uh, Despite their insistence that a stable release is coming very soon, once all these bugs have been squashed, it has been five days since the intended date of release, and eager fans are already getting... annoyed. One fan has called the delay a travesty, citing that he took out a 12th mortgage on his orbital hab block in order to both pre-order the game and assemble a quantum rig capable of running the high-performance simulator. Another cited her ample donations to Original's ongoing fundraiser as a serious waste of investment capital and threatened to liquidate all her pre-purchased in-game assets if Original did not launch the game within the week. These stories, and others like them, have been playing out all week, and already tensions are beginning to spill over from hypernet discussion boards into reality. Now, we've relocated our studio to a low orbit around Terra, where a number of agitators have gathered near the orbital complex where Original houses their main offices. They claim to be holding vigil until the release of the game, but reports indicate that fascist UEE security forces have already had to detain several of these individuals for disrupting civilian shipping. A spokesperson for local security released a statement just a few hours ago. While UEE security fully understands your commitment to original systems and this much-awaited video game, we must respectfully request that you do so from the comfort of your home sector. Your devotion to see this project through, while admirable, is disrupting regular shipping through this sector, and our security forces are already stretched far too thin, cracking down on Pinkokami peace activists and traitorous vandal sympathizers to deal with unruly video game fans in any meaningful way. Please do not attempt to storm the offices of original systems, as any such incursion will be considered seditious activity and met with lethal force. Thanks for your time. Long live the Empire. We'll uh, keep you up to date as the story progresses. In military news, another Bengal carrier has been reported as missing with all hands, the third in just as many months. The fascist UEE Navy has called this latest incident an embarrassment, and has pledged to do everything in their power to recover this undoubtedly valuable piece of military hardware. The Bengal-class carrier, known in some circles as the fascist UEE's tip of the spear, has been criticized by some citizens and private organizations in the past as a boondoggle and a tremendous waste of taxpayer dollars. Critics have cited known problems since the carrier's introduction, such as potentially vulnerable network firmware and an over-reliance on heavy weaponry, as frankly irresponsible decisions that even mid-20th century Earth ships had long ago discarded as impractical. Uh, the ship class was, of course, developed under contract by Robert Space Industries, a well-known and regarded manufacturer of spacecraft. RSI has responded to accusations in the past that they were simply the lowest bidder for the Bengal program, claiming that the fascist UEE's insistence for as early a rollout as possible for these gargantuan ships forced many shipyards to cut corners during production to meet state-sanctioned deadlines. Moreover, they state that Naval High Command shifted their design requirements several times throughout the Bengal's development history, forcing RSI engineers to make changes on the fly while substantially inflating the development project's already stratospheric budget. 
The manufacturer reiterated their position that the Bengal, despite a few teething problems, is still by far the most powerful vessel in known space, and well worth its gargantuan price tag of 600 quintillion UEC. However, many citizens, myself included, aren't so confident in the capabilities of these behemoths. Reports from Fringe Space have indicated that since its introduction to military service, more and more of these supercarriers have been brought down by Vandal raiding parties or nomadic outlaw fleets in outlying Terran systems, or simply abandoned in the face of overwhelming odds. Uh, there have even been a few unconfirmed instances of private groups claiming a derelict bangle for their own unscrupulous uses. Now, all of these reports have, of course, been denied by the fascist UEE, which claims that any private group claiming such an impressive piece of military hardware for themselves is absurd and completely ridiculous. To date, all service records for the currently unknown numbers of these ships have remained classified for public security reasons. My advice, listeners? If on your travels you come across a serendipitously abandoned Bengal, it might be more trouble than it's worth. Okay, an update on the situation outside Original Entertainment's offices above Terra. A few hours ago, local security was asked to cordon off a portion of the orbital habitation block as neutral ground for the steadily increasing numbers of Arena Commander protesters and hopefuls. It was hoped that this free speech discussion zone would alleviate the growing unrest outside the facility by giving these frustrated gamers a place to both vent and discuss their concerns. But the situation began to deteriorate rapidly almost from the start. Supporters of Original faced off against those who were outraged by the delays and lack of communication from the company. And soon, both sides consolidated their numbers and barricaded off their own sections of the hab block. We're already receiving scattered reports of violence breaking out amongst those gathered there, with local security stretched far too thin to deal with the situation adequately at this time. So far, there have been three deaths reported as a result of a bloody knife fight breaking out between a small pocket of frustrated gamers, along with... 32 injured when a row of vending machines collapsed on some desperately hungry protesters. Now, the situation out in space is not that much better. Half an hour ago, a battle group spearheaded by a privately owned Idris frigate, flying under the banner of the mercenary organization Le Chevalier Blanc, jumped into the system and immediately took up a defensive perimeter around Original's headquarters. Now, the mercenaries claim to be acting in the interest of protecting Original from violent agitators, but a spokesperson from the local fascist UEE garrison has denied that there's any official link between the entertainment giant and the private group. Le Chevalier Blanc have threatened to neutralize by any means necessary any ship that appears to be acting in a threatening manner toward Original Systems, though this ultimatum only seems to have emboldened the increasing number of protesters gathered outside. Uh, frankly, listeners, I think you should steer clear of this sector until this whole mess dies down. We'll continue to hold station here to provide up-to-date news as it happens. In the meantime, here's a quick word from one of our sponsors. Original Entertainment is proud to announce the release of our long-awaited space combat simulator, Arena Commander. Boasting the cutting edge in VR fidelity and supported by millions of fans galaxy-wide, Arena Commander puts you in the seat of a top-of-the-line combat ship, ready to blast your way through the Vandal hordes or other players online. We've made sure to replicate nearly every detail of our three flagships, the venerable Anvil Hornet, a sleek Origin 300, and the reliable RSI Aurora, right down to the last rivet. Why risk your life in the cold void of space when you can feel the same thrill of bleeding-edge space combat in the comfort of your own sensory deprivation pod? Arena Commander, coming soon to a licensed VR dealer near you. Okay, let's take a look at local weather for a bit. A large interstellar dust cloud has been sighted north of... Hold on. Uh, listeners, breaking news, there's just been an explosion in the hab block where the arena commander discussion and demilitarized zone had been set up. It looks like, um, okay, hold on. Uh, comm reports are coming in that a riot has broken out within the hab block. Uh, supporters of original are attacking the protesters who have barricaded themselves in the cafeteria wing, with violence escalating as we speak. Um, okay, so far I'm getting reports that 20... Uh, no, scratch that. 30 have died in the chaos so far, with dozens more injured and... Oh my... Listeners, the Idris Frigate Azrael has just opened fire. I repeat, the Chevalier Blanc have opened fire on protesters in orbit. Multiple private vessels are now engaged in free combat. I'm receiving reports that, um... The Chairman Blair and a small group of developers are trapped on board the station, which is beginning to take quite a lot of fire, and... Okay, okay, forget it. We're getting out of here. Uh, to anyone still listening, get the hell out of Terra while you still can. 
Local security are trying to contain the chaos. We got multiple patrol ships now engaged in combat. The, uh, the, the Azrael is taking sustained fire from multiple ships now. It seems to be... Oh, Christ. Uh, it's going down. Shit, she's going down. Okay, listeners, I'm taking the studio out of here. I might not be able to keep a hypercast going. Um, I'm gonna put on some music, so you just sit... Uh, ah, oh, jeez, no, no, no! Every single person you have ever feared Who made you want to hide away and disappear Who laughed at your misfortune and called you weird They're mostly just bags of water The kid who broke your glasses in the second grade Who took your lunch money in the playground shade Who made you feel helpless and so afraid Mostly just a bag of water All the people on the street Are just skin upon the meat With a scaffolding of bone and sinew It's a beautiful machine But it's lipids and proteins And carbohydrates locked within you So when you want to talk To the girl down the block And you're scared of feeling like a stalker Just remember that you both Underneath your fancy clothes are only just bags of water The girl who you took to the senior prom Who went to freshen up but then she took too long The guy you found her kissing in the parking lot They're mostly just bags of water The driver in the semi in the passing lane Blocking up the traffic all the way to Spain The cop who pulls you over when you drive like a saint They're mostly just bags of water The people on the street are just skin upon the meat With a scaffolding of bone and sinew It's a beautiful machine but it's lipids and proteins And carbohydrates locked within you so when you want to talk to the girl down the block And you're scared of feeling like a stalker Just remember that you both underneath your fancy clothes Are only just bags of water Before you start to think you're smart And different from the rest Like there's something deep and so unique is hiding in your flesh Just remember you are a bag of water too All the people on the street are just skin upon the meat With a scaffolding of bone and sinew It's a beautiful machine but it's lipids and proteins And carbohydrates locked within you Talk to the girl down the block You're scared of feeling like a stalker Just remember that you both Underneath your fancy clothes Are only just bags of water You are only just a bag of water Uh, hello? Listeners? Uh, right, sorry about that Uh, things got a bit hairy back there not to worry, though, a very generous Xion captain helped tow us out of the system. He, um, hold on, I think he wants to speak to me. Wait? Hmm, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. I don't know if it's a game. I don't know what they're going to do. Tomorrow or tomorrow? Let's see. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I think they're just... 以为中国人是从太空还是什么好那我就下个礼拜跟你讲话再见 Sorry about that uh, Anyway, looking at my board here It looks like major casualties were sustained in the fighting above Terra The riot in the HAB module was quelled after the fascist UE security forces depressurized the entire structure Killing all 20,000 or so people still on board at the time 
The security gunships also mopped up the remains of the fighting in space, with the loss of the Azrael bringing the death toll up to around 30,000 in total, as well as striking a critical blow against Le Chevalier Blanc. The search and rescue crews are still cleaning up the area, and the system has been placed under total lockdown. Fortunately, we're told that the chairman and most of the original staff were able to evacuate before the fighting reached the station, though the extensive infrastructure damage sustained during the fighting means that they're going to have to once again delay the release of Arena Commander. Understandable, but disappointing. In the meantime, we've got some repairs of our own to make. Our hypernet relay was damaged in the chaos, which means the hypercast itself is going to be delayed until we can patch things up. So, who knows? Maybe by the time you're listening to this, you'll be immersing yourself in the next generation virtual experience of Arena Commander. Until next time, listeners, you've been listening to Radio Voss God. This is Archimedes, signing off.